Hello! Today I'm going to be demonstrating the installation of the Sub-Zero Polar Cap, unique retractable roof aisle containment system from Sub-Zero Engineering. The main component of the Polar Cap roof is the cassette. The cassette houses the actual roof material as well as the retraction mechanism for the roof. Here we have another component of the Polar Cap containment system, the side rail. These side rails come in lengths typically of five foot and attach to both the cassette as well as the end rail to form the containment along the top of the server cabinets. While they come in five foot sections, they also can be cut if needed in the field to provide exact size for your containment footprint. These are designed to fit into the cassette and end rail by the use of a telescoping piece that simply pushes in and it has snap buttons that once inserted fully pop out into the adjacent piece completing the installation. These side rails are also numerically labeled and you'll notice here for instance that this one has a D on the end of it. It's as simple as finding on the polar cap or an adjacent rail a matching D and making sure that those two pieces fit together. This coating helps the installer put it together quickly and accurately. Another component is the end rail. This end rail goes on the very end of the containment, attaches to the side rails, and provides an attachment point for the retractable roof. The first step is to place the cassette at the end of the containment above the server racks. We've made sure that the distances are equal and that the unit is centered over the aisle of containment. Next, we want to attach the cassette as it is heavy and we want it to be stabilized for the rest of our installation. We do this by utilizing the 90 degree brackets that come with the polar cap. These are supplied with drop-in style nuts that are designed to slide into the rail on both the front as well as the side rails of the polar cap. This allows us to attach very easily the polar cap to either the server cabinets or in this case the sub-zero ILN door. The 90 degree bracket is used to connect the cassette to either the sub-zero ILN door or the server cabinet. You'll notice that the bracket has a short and a long leg. The short leg needs to go down and be placed either on top of the door header or on the server cabinet as you will. Here we have it attached to the Sub-Zero ILN door and you can see that it still allows clearance for the door to roll. Alternately, the polar cap cassette can be attached to the side rails to the server cabinets utilizing the 90 degree bracket. Utilize the slot on the side of the rails to attach easily the 90 degree bracket and then attach it to the server. Our next step is to attach the side rail to the cassette now that we've secured the cassette portion. You'll notice once again that the side rails are indexed with either letters or numbers that match corresponding points for attachment purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the side rail by taking the telescoping portion here and inserting it into the cassette rail and then pushing the rails together until the snap lock pops out and I know that it's fully connected. We're now ready to install the end rail portion. In a similar fashion as the side rails, the end rail just attaches using telescopic connections and once again the snap button pops out when it's connected. We'll go ahead and attach the end rail by simply sliding it on much like we did the side rails until it snaps and locks into place like so. It's important before we attach the end piece or finish attaching the side rails that everything is true and square. So verify that the side rails are equidistant to the aisle and that everything is nice and true before beginning to attach the end rails and the side. One of the important things about truing and squaring the rails and end on the polar cap is making sure that the distance between the rails 
is the same all the way from the end piece all the way to the cassette. There can't be any bowing in the rails or it will impede the operation of the retractable roof. So it's important to make sure that you have a true straight line all the way down each side rail. Now that we have the polar cap nice and square with the rails in the end piece, it's as simple as attaching the side rails in the end much as we did earlier with the cassette. Simply use the 90 degree brackets and attach to either the aisle end doors or the server cabinet to complete the attachment. We're now ready to deploy our roof utilizing the rope and pulley system that's designed to extend the roof easily. Taking the rope will push the rope up through the hole in the end rail that has the small pulley fixed on the horizontal. After threading the rope around and up through the hole, we'll proceed down towards the cassette and push the rope around the first pulley on the leading edge of the roof. After doing that, we bring it back again to the end rail and thread it through the second pulley there. One more time back to the cassette and around the second pulley on the leading edge of the roof. And now our rope is complete with the exception of the last step. We take the end of the rope, we push it down through the top of the end rail and the only hole that's left. And once we push it down through, we take the end and tie a very simple knot in the end like so. Now that we have the rope and pulley system fully rigged, I'm going to go ahead and pull on the rope and deploy the roof and you'll be able to see the pulleys in action in the rope system as the roof is deployed. I could easily pull with just one person the roof as it closes and is drawn together by the pulley and rope system. As you finish bringing your roof the last distance for it to close, make sure you have your fusible link close at hand. That allows you, as the roof closed, to place the fusible link between the two tabs that keep the roof closed. Slide your link on, pull the roof tight, and make sure the link is engaged like so. Now that my roof is completely deployed and safely locked in the closed position, I can simply undo the simple knot that I tied earlier, pull on this end of the rope, and my rope comes out. Here we have the ETL link. This device allows us to provide actuation for the retractable roof system using not only mechanical means, namely 165 degrees, but also using a small electrical signal from the fire suppression system. Here you notice we've actually installed the ETL link and now the roof is ready to be actuated by either mechanical means, namely 165 degrees, or alternately from a small electrical signal from the fire suppression system. This is an example of the roof retracting in a fire suppression event. There's a couple of options we have for taking care of spots where you might have a missing cabinet. One of which is our solid panel system, which can be placed in the spot where the rack is missing. As can be seen, the rigid panel provides a very professional looking solution. Another option for filling in missing racks is utilizing rack hat vinyl. This vinyl can be slid into the extrusion in the provided slots. As you can see, the groove has allowed us to install strip doors on the end of the aisle containment. In this example, we have the flexible rack hat curtain material that we've attached to the built-in rail on the polar cap. This shows how you can easily fill the space between a missing cabinet by utilizing the soft, flexible curtain material if you'd like. That completes our polar cap installation. I hope you found this helpful. If you need additional information, please visit us at our website.